What's up, everybody? It's your boy Zuko Mazi. I'm coming at you with another tutorial. And for this one, I wouldn't even really call it a tutorial. It's going to be more like an overview of everything that I did and how you guys can get it working in your project. I know this isn't the best way to do it. I'm not. So I want you guys to pretty much get an overview of this and definitely take it upon yourselves to improve it in your own way. And it's not going to be, uh, you know I mean, hold your hand, showing you every little thing. I'm just giving you an overview of what I did and then I'm going to even give you the scripts. So you can look at the scripts, open them up and edit them yourself. So right now, pretty much I've got, this is the main menu, some UI set up with a few buttons. And you know I mean, you can go to your garage and you can select your car. You know what I mean? And you can change the color of your cars. And then once you change the color, pretty much, let me see, I don't wanna go with that one. We gotta go with the Ferrari, you know what I mean? Once you change the color, you can go in and you can pick your scene. It'll be a little start start camera too as well, so you can go for a start, so I gotta fix that, but at least for your AI. You see how I even got a little mini map on the top. So let me just go ahead and get into it, show you guys how this stuff works. And you know I mean, you just apply the logic to your own project. Or let's get it cracking. So this is the main menu, and pretty much this is a separate scene, your main menu scene. And at the load, depending on, I mean, let me let me get here first. So. First, just let me show you guys how these scripts work of loading the car, loading your materials, and changing the car, and loading them into the scene. So, this is all working on pretty much integers and floats. And let me show you. So, this is going to be for your main menu. Being able to select the car, and depending on which car you select, it's going to show that car in the menu for that car so you can change the colors and all that. So, it's just pretty much a simple script public int active car and then you got public game object car one two three four five and you do this for how many cars you need and we're gonna have to change the active car through a void when you click the button it will change the active car so once I click this button I want my active car to be one once I click this button I active car to be two and in the update function if the active car is equal to one it sets the corresponding car true and all the other cars false. It's equal to two. It says two true and all the other cars are false. And that's how you see right here when I put, go to my garage. Once I click this one, it's gonna set, you know what I mean, select the car and show the UI for it. And that's pretty much gonna be how everything works. So that's kind of like, that's for your main menu. Let me show you again how it works for like when you start the race now. So you got a public imp for your current car. If your current car is equal to one, it's gonna instantiate that car that you set in the prefab. It's gonna be all these prefabs that you made on your own, which is the cars that you load to the scene that I showed you uh, from the last tutorial. And you're gonna make your different cars with different, you know what I mean? All the different stuff. And Put them to the spectrum. So you got public and current car. And if this car is equal to one, you have stand to shake this car at the start position. Start position is just a transform that you put wherever you want your car to start. So if it's equal to one, it's stand to car one. If it's equal to two, it's stand to car two, and thus forth. And that's how that works for the race start. So now when you see when I come in, uh, let's see. And it's going to be like phonogamous for all your things. So when I put this card in one, it does it for the race grip, it does it for the materials, it does it for this. So it's selecting this car, and even when I go to my scene, my car is now equal to three. So it's gonna instantiate car three. So I go to race, which is this car. And it pretty much loads that car into the scene.
and now I'm going to show you how to do it for the materials of switching your car material. So with the car materials, it's literally the same thing. I hate to sound like a brick of record, but repetition is the father of learning, you know what I mean? So got a public float for your car and you're going to have different voids, which is you can do them however you want and wherever you want, but you're going to put those voids on your button. And when you click that button, the voids are going to do certain things. So now this is going to be what you put on your car's material. So you're going to have to make sure you go into your prefab. Let me show you. Let me go to these cars. I got these cars right here. Go to your prefab. You got to make sure you put it on an actual thing that's rendering the materials or else it wouldn't work you gotta put this on whatever is with rendering materials the body of the car if you got one of those uh like cars that have multiple you just have to put it on all of them now, i'm not sure if you have to change the script for that but hey i don't know <laughs> so that's how that works you put this on them body of your car the body of your car and that's so so if car is equal to one it's going to reference back to your car save script and saying it's equal to whatever you your car save script material is equal to which is what you whatever you set it to when you push the button like i said if you push the button blue let me show you let me show you let me show you let me tell you so like i go here and it's pretty much doing this car material if material is equal to one it renders this material if it's equal to two it renders that material and when i click on these buttons so say i click on blue it's now equal to one and if it's equal to one it renders blue so bam i click into it the value is equal to one it renders you know what i mean that material it's equal to three it renders white it's equal to four it renders purple equal to five it renders pink vice versa you know what i mean so far so far so that's pretty much how that works and it's it's also saving it so let me show you guys how to make sure you save it so now when i go to make sure you select the car so now when you go to a different scene the value stay so with the save script I really want you to watch the tutorial because I'm not going to explain the entire thing. I had watched the tutorial. I'm not just going to repeat this guy's tutorial. So it just pretty much just says this is equal to this and these values are equal to this values. And I'm leaving the scripts there so you can play around with them. But I will watch that guy's tutorial because if you don't know how to work with a safe script, that's something you absolutely have to learn with playing making games anyway. So it says this is equal to that and this is equal to this. And for my save script, I got integers for the materials. So if the material is equal to 55, it loads the 55th material that I set in a spectrum for whichever card is equal to. And that's pretty much just overview of how everything works. It's just integers and floats. And if this integer is equal to this, it loads this card. If this integer is equal to this, it loads, renders this material. And to know what these things are, you just gotta simply Google search them. Like, I didn't know off the top of my head just what render material it is to type in. So I just typed in, how do you Google? What do you type in for uh, render material? And it's get game object, I met, got, got. And it says right here, get game object, mesh renderer, that material is equal to the public material you set. Simple, simple. So that's what selecting your cars and customize your car's materials and stuff like that and load them into your next scene. Now I'm just going to show you how the countdown timer works and let me give you an overview of that. So I got the public game object timer set which is a timer script that counts down. Let me show you what I mean. Just like uh, every racing game needs, you know, you need the timer.
So once it counts down, it's gonna set that game object tree, which is right here at the bottom corner, you see it. And now the timer starts, just like a real race. So that's for the timer. And also it's gonna, you know what I mean? You see the five, four, three, two, one. So you're just gonna need the text that you put on the screen, canvas, create a canvas, put the text on there. And that's gonna be your public text. And you got a, what's it called? Integer for the time. It's an IE numerator reader right here. That pretty much counts down. And once that, once it's equal to zero, so if you set this time to five, it's gonna count down five, four, three, two, one. And once it's equal to zero, it displays go. And then it sets the time to check true, which is the timer for the start the race. And pretty much did the exact same thing for the AI, but you don't have to display anything for that. So say if I put it for five seconds in my countdown script, I put this exact same script on my AI and it's the start delay. So it counts down and once it's wait a little you have a train with the start delay. Also, this one, it doesn't need to count down. It just counts to five. So if it's five seconds on the other one, it's the same thing. So put five seconds on this one. After five seconds, it's gonna enable the car controller, which is the script on the car that allows it to move. So you're gonna disable that for all your game objects and put that on them at the beginning. So that way they won't drive until after the set time. You feel me? You feel me? All right, so now you guys are still following along on this this, this tutorial that some somewhat isn't in the tutorial. <laughs> so if you wanna get the mini map working, I'm just gonna leave a link for that one actually. That way you get a full understanding of how it works. Uh, not too long of a tutorial, so just leave that link right there. And if you made it to the end of the, the video, I mean, I definitely appreciate you watching. This is the most official tutorial. Just hope it helps you out and you can prove upon the script that I made. Cause I didn't want it to go to waste. And, you know what I mean? Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next video.